Welcome to Scene 3, Oracle Machine Learning. In this lab, we're going to use Oracle Machine Learning and lots of its uh, capabilities to predict customer churn. Depending on the work done on the previous labs, we're going to learn how to identify potential churners so that we can use them for promotions and for uh, the recommendations coming up on the next labs. Oracle Machine Learning is included in all Oracle databases. And especially in Autonomous Database, it includes a few additional components that we're going to see today. So OML has a scalable and sophisticated data preparation component for all of the machine learning requirements. Everything is in there, including the rich SQL language, Python interfaces. There are uh, different database operators, and all of those can support data scientists and data engineers. Uh, we also brought the algorithms to the data. So the algorithms run at the scalability of the database. So they are distributed, they are running in parallel, and they can build and score in parallel very fast. The automated machine learning or auto ML technology is also included. And this allows you to actually have a tool that helps you choose the best model for the problem at hand. So citizens data scientists can gain access to these powerful algorithms. And finally, we're going to see how OML reduces time to market for ML deployments because we can do scoring through SQL, through Python, REST APIs with sub-second scoring responses for real-time applications. And that enables integration with machine learning results very easily for third-party applications. So the first step is looking at the churn. Uh, in this case, we're trying to predict churn, so estimating in the future when a customer would stop using our service. So for us, we need to look at the past behavior of customers that actually left and all the other customers that stayed and try uh, to feed that data into the algorithm so that the algorithms can differentiate people that stayed from people that left. And then it will be able to then predict uh, in the future who's going to leave and who's going to stay so that we can focus on the ones that are going to leave and try to offer something that will keep them. In our case, we're going to aggregate data monthly so that we can see the behavior from month to month, and then we can identify whether a customer is going to churn in a couple of months ahead of time. Uh, there's also data pivoting aspects to make sure that we can see if a customer uses credit card, has any influence versus a customer using other forms of payment, uh, and then comparing customers that use different devices to watch the movies and things like that. And finally, the definition of churn, right? That's normally the, the most complex business process that needs to happen, which is who is actually a churner, right? Is a customer that stops using the service completely or a customer that just haven't watched the movie on the last month? So what we're going to do for the current lab, just like depicted here, then we're going to build the model using 12 months of data measured from October 2019 to October 2020. And then we're going to apply the model to the current data that we have to try to estimate the probability of a customer to be a churner uh, in uh, February or of 2021. So when you go back to the instructions, then you're going to see that lab five uh, use Oracle machine learning auto UI to predict churn is right here. And basically at the beginning of the sections here, we're going to see just a quick introduction. And if you look at the tasks, we have basically four tasks. The first one is to understand customer churn and access the Oracle Machine Learning AutoML UI. Then we're going to run the experiment and explore the results. And finally, we're going to deploy the model and score a new table. So the first task then is looking at all of that information. It's just revisiting what we were just talking about in terms of the, the what kind of data and what kind of table makes sense for us to predict churn. And uh, the first steps are going to be to go through the current autonomous database that you have and learn how to get to the auto ML UI. So let's see how we do that. So from the details page of the autonomous database, you click on service console and in the service console, you're going to click on development and then on the Oracle machine learning notebook style. And in here, uh, you're going to log in into Oracle Machine Learning Notebook using the movie stream user and the appropriate password. And that's going to take you to the home page of uh, Oracle Machine Learning. 
From the homepage of Oracle Machine Learning, we're going to click on AutoML on the left hand side in the quick actions. And in AutoML experiments, you see there's none there. So we're going to create one. And basically, we're going to give it a name. So we can give, you know, any uh, interesting uh, descriptive name and also a comment. And then we're going to click on data source. We need to find the table that actually represents the churner. So it's a movie stream underscore churn. And we're going to say OK. So now we can actually see that if we scroll down in the screen, we see the features that are available in that table. And we see there are lots of transactions from previous months, discount, genres of movies, how many you know uh, movies that people have watched. So we're going to select the prediction uh, column that is the is underscore Turner and the cust ID as case ID attribute. And on the additional settings on the left, we're going to actually reduce the number of maximum top models to two, and we're going to change the data service level to high, just so that we can uh, run this as fast as possible. We are ready to start our experiment, but before that, this is just a, a, an idea of the different algorithms that are contained uh, in the Oracle Machine Learning for in database purposes. Basically, they allow you to do a lot of the uh, multiple interfaces, so they are accessible through SQL, through Python, and we also have a scalability in our favor there. Moving to task two is where we're going to see uh, how to run the experiment. And then we're going to be evaluating uh, the different models that come out as the best ones, uh, and we're going to learn uh, how to deploy them on task number three. So here in uh, task two is where we're going to see uh, the experiment and uh, all the steps that it requires for us to just, you know, start that experiment and then evaluate it. We're going to be waiting for that to run and we're going to see all the components. We're going to see the models, we're going to compare them, um, and then we're going to see the model statistics and the leaderboard, and we're going to learn how to uh, evaluate and look into that uh, data that it uh, returns. So let's uh, start the experiment. We select the uh, faster results because the better accuracy will take more time. And then once it's running, we can see that um, it starts uh, selecting the algorithm uh, and then uh, the process keeps going. You can go back to the experiments and you're going to notice that it's running, right? So that means uh, it's running uh, asynchronously. So you don't, you don't have to look at it while it's running, but we can go back and uh, you can see that now it's all the way down to the model tuning and it's going to tune um, the models that it found the best ones, decision tree and random forest in our case. And once it's done, uh, it's going to actually add a feature prediction impacts uh, to each model. So if we scroll down, now we have a new column there, an importance column that shows us the relative importance of the columns for the problem at hand. But each model has its own specific feature impact. So now we click on the decision tree and that uh, screen opens up. So we can see the specific uh, uh, attributes that were determined, uh, age, gender, tr the genres, different household sizes. Uh, and then if we click on confusion matrix, you can see that the greens are the good ones. So looking at the explanation in the labs, you can see that the, the diagonals sum up to 95.42%. So the model was correct. And then we got a problem with 3.59% of the customers that we thought they were going to churn and they didn't. So they're going to just receive uh, offers and free offers and they are already loyal customers. And there's less than 1% of the customers that we did not detect that they were going to churn, but they did. So it's a, a small number. So the last step we're going to do is actually, we're going to uh, click again on our leaderboard in the, the model, and then we're going to click on rename. So you give the model a new name, um, just so that we can recognize that in SQL later. And we say, okay, and uh, to the top right, you're going to see an indication that the model was successfully renamed. So now at task three, basically what we're going to see is that uh, you're going to have to download uh, the scoring customers with churn model notebook. This is a JSON file uh, that is uh, available to you. So you have to download that and store it in your local computer. And uh, we're going to select then the hamburger menu here and the notebooks. And with that, we're going to see that we have the notebooks. So there are going to be probably no notebooks here. And you're going to be able to click on import, and then you're going to import that file that we just uh, downloaded. With that in hand, then you're going to be able to click on it and open that notebook. And then inside the notebook, what we're going to do, the first thing is we're going to select the right interpreter. So we're going to click on that gear, select interpreter, and then we're going to run the entire set of uh, paragraphs. So with that, basically, we're going to get the output. So the output is going to be the scoring. 
Uh, the code that is already there is going to score that. There is an example of that code and how to run it uh, if you wanted to connect it to your own instance and run it on SQL. Uh, but basically, there's a 1% sample of uh, the output, uh, and then you're going to be able to see the customer ID, whether the customer will churn or not, and then the probability of the churn is going to be displayed there. And that's going to be the end of the Oracle uh, Machine Learning AutoML UI to predict churn lab. So as we saw before then, we have to click on the hamburger menu and go to the notebooks. And in there, you know, you might have no other uh, previous notebooks. So we're going to click on import and we're going to import that notebook that we just downloaded, the JSON file that we downloaded before. And now when it shows up, we can just uh, click on it to open it up. So when it loads, the first thing we're going to do um, is check for the uh, interpreter. So we have to go all the way to the right on the top click on that gear and maybe gra drag that medium uh, up top and then click on run all paragraphs so that we can run all uh, the entire notebooks. When it runs, then uh, every paragraph is going to be executed and we remove a table if that exists before, but then we create a table called latest potential churners, which is going to contain the churn prediction and the churn probabilities. Um, and then if we uh, preview that table, basically you're going to see that we have customer IDs, whether the customer is going to churn or not, and the probability to churn, which if it's larger than 50%, then we say the customer is going to churn. Otherwise, the customer is not going to churn. And we're ready to proceed to the next lab using that uh, potential churner stable. To learn more, we have Oracle Machine Learning Live Labs and several different resources. So we have a lot of Machine Learning Live Labs available that you can go check using the QR code here on top. There are Oracle Machine Learning notebooks and template examples that come with the tool. You have the GitHub repository with all the samples we have available. And Oracle Machine Learning Office Hours Weekly, where we show you several different use cases and everything that is new about OML is always uh, shown there. So as a closing thought, basically Oracle Machine Learning has key attributes. The automation, the scalability, and making it production ready. And these are the three key attributes that OML brings to make machine learning in production a reality. Thank you for watching.